it's time for church. Hi, I'm Marcus. Hey, I'm Lexi. And we are associate ministers here at Potomac Valley, and together we lead the youth and family ministry. And we'd like to welcome you to our Sunday worship service. We're so glad you've chosen to worship with us today. With all this going on in our world, it feels so good just to be able to come together and connect in this way. As we're going through these services, we're going to be trying to make improvements every service. Uh, for our local members, we've been getting your notes. They've been very helpful. You're not going to see those this service, but hopefully next service, you're going to see some of those ideas implemented. Our goal is to have as connected a worship experience as possible. So to that end, please sing with us. Please pray with us. Please hear the word with us as we try to have a great worship service together. All right, so we're about to sing some songs of worship. Again, we're so happy that you're joining us this morning. I hope you enjoy the rest of your service.
We're so grateful to be here in Fredericksburg, Virginia. Last week, we were with you in Woodbridge, right by the Potomac River. Today, we're here in Fredericksburg, right by the Rappahannock River. So beautiful. Fredericksburg is an amazing place. And as a congregation, we made a decision that we'd start a new campus or a new region right here in Fredericksburg. We've had members here for 25 years, and we functioned as a church in this area for 12 but we've not had a region here, and we're so excited about this new regional planting. But for it to happen, it's gonna mean sacrifice. It's gonna mean that we give our time, our talent, and our treasure to help advance the gospel. You know what, this is such an incredible time. I just wanna encourage you all to remember that God is with us. Even though this may feel like a dark time, this is the time where God works the best when, it, when times are the darkest. I was reading in a book called The Disciple Shift just the other day, and it was a great question they asked. They asked, look, what do you think your church would be like if you could not meet in a building anymore? Mm -hmm. And I don't know when this book was written, but obviously somebody already knew. God already knew. He already knew what would happen, and he put plans in place in our church, and I'm so grateful for what community we have been able to build and the family groups that we've been able to get close in and I pray for our congregation to just get stronger and closer during this time and this is not a time for us to take our foot off the gas and our giving this is the time for us to surge forward and see what God does and how he blesses our sacrifice yeah I'm so grateful to, to that point that Tasha is making about sacrifice I think about the sacrifice that was made in 1 Chronicles chapter 28 and verse 20. David made a decision that he would invest his own, um, his own goods, his own gold, his own silver, all of his materials, all of his funds to see the temple built. And Tasha and I, our family, we've sat and we've really counted the cost about how we can invest even more in seeing the gospel advance. 
This is also a great example because it shows one generation sacrificing so that the next generation can hear the gospel and see the gospel advance. And right in verse 20 it says, Be strong and courageous and do the work. Do not be afraid or discouraged, for the Lord my God is with you, and he will not fail you or forsake you until all the work for the service of the temple of the Lord is finished. We need to finish the work. We need to see this region planted. It's going to take incredible sacrifice for this to happen. And I'm so proud of the Potomac Valley Church as you've sacrificed in amazing ways. Just so you know, giving is really easy in our congregation. Here's what you can do. You can download our mobile app. You can uh, give directly to PushPay that way. Or you can contact your bank and you can uh, uh, give to contribution just like you'd pay for any other bill. Um, and you can give that way as well. All of our giving is all electronic. And I am proud, proud, proud of this congregation for its sacrificial giving and for our commitment to sacrifice, to hire a new uh, ministry leader to be able to lead this region, to purchase a building. We're keeping our foot on the gas to purchase a building, to see a new preschool get opened this fall. And we believe all these things can happen, but it's going to take all of us rallying together in a great way. We're so grateful for your sacrifice. Let's go to God right now in a word of prayer as we pray for our contribution. Our God and Father, thank you so much for the generosity of the Potomac Valley Church. Thank you so much for the faithfulness. I'm so inspired by our family group leaders as we met this Wednesday night and we talked about whether we wanted to surge forward and everyone unanimously said, yes, we want to move forward in looking for leaders to lead this region. We want to move forward on the purchase of the building in Fredericksburg. We want to move forward on seeing the preschool started this fall. And even though we're going through this incredibly unknown time and this epic challenge that we face in front of us with the corona pandemic, still our faith is to go and to move forward. God, I pray, God, that you bless our giving like never before. And thank you for the generosity of this church. I pray that no one feels compelled. And I pray that no one is reluctant but that we're all able to give generously according to what we have and not according to what we don't have. I pray that you glorify yourself through our giving in this challenging, unknown, but incredibly exciting time. We pray all these things in Jesus' name, amen. We're really excited to be here in Fredericksburg, Virginia, and we're honored this weekend that we get to have Aaron and Aisha Jackson, who serve with the Northern Virginia Church interviewing with us to be considered to lead the Fredericksburg region. We've known Aaron and Aisha for 15 years. It's been such an honor to see them grow in their faith in amazing ways and leading God's kingdom in incredible ways. And we've been so grateful to work alongside them over the past five years as they've served in the Northern Virginia Church. And we pray that God moves in an amazing way through the communion that Aisha shares today and the message that Aaron preaches to us. Amen. In just a few minutes, Aisha will come and do communion, and I'm so excited for you all to meet her. She has such an incredible heart for God, and she shares it in her preaching. She shares it in her singing. Mm -hmm. She shares it in her life. It's very evident, and I'm so excited that you'll get a chance to see a little snippet of it today. Let's welcome this amazing couple as they share God's word with us, and I pray that you welcome them, welcome them into your homes and into your hearts. Good morning, everyone. My name is Aisha Jackson, and alongside with my husband, we lead the Southeast region of the Northern Virginia Church of Christ. Uh, it's been my pleasure to serve in the ministry as a campus minister for five years and currently as a women's ministry leader in our region for six years. As a young disciple, I was drawn to the work of the ministry, which I saw as loving people like Jesus. I felt terrified and excited by this and believed that whether paid or not, it was my calling. I just celebrated 19 years as a disciple, and I feel more passionately called to, the, to lead and love the women and the women's ministry now more than ever. What I enjoy most about women's ministry is getting to know people's stories and seeing their marriages, their families grow and prosper, and just really get to know God. We have really built, built a strong sense of family in our region because family is really important to us. I'm grateful for the opportunity to spend time with you, to get to know you virtually, and to be here with the Archers, who have been longtime friends and mentors in the ministry and just really encouraging to us. 
and uh, to be able to take this time right now to share my thoughts for the communion. So turn with me please to Mark chapter 1 and we'll read verses 40 through 45. Mark chapter 1 verse 40 through 45 reads, A man with leprosy came to him and begged him on his knees, If you are willing, you can make me clean. Jesus was indignant. He reached out his hand and touched the man. I am willing, he said, be clean. Immediately the leprosy left him and he was cleansed. Jesus sent him away at once with a strong warning. See that you don't tell this to anyone, but go, show yourself to the priests and offer the sacrifices that Moses commanded for your cleansing as a testimony to them. Instead, he went out and began to talk freely, spreading the news. As a result, Jesus could no longer enter a town openly, but stayed outside in lonely places. Yet the people still came to him from everywhere. I became a Christian because I fell in love with Jesus and was enamored with how he treated people and how he interacted with all kinds of people. I saw myself in those people. I see my story in this man's story because like him, my skin is my story. Leprosy is known as an infectious skin disease that would cause you to be unclean. At the age of nine, I was diagnosed with an autoimmune skin condition called vitiligo. Vitiligo is when your mel melanin skin cells attack your body. Although not contagious, it is genetic and progressive. It's also triggered by stress, making it autoimmune. I know right now with COVID-19, those of us with autoimmune conditions are particularly vulnerable so I just wanna encourage everybody to stay safe and make wise choices. The Greek word for indignant here means to be moved with compassion. When Jesus saw this man with his leprosy on his knees begging in his self doubt, he was indignant with compassion. Jesus was willing and able to intervene in this man's life, changing his story for eternity. In Leviticus, it talks about defiling skin, to, skin conditions. And in these verses, the skin condition that I have vitiligo is mentioned. In Levit Leviticus chapter 12, verses 12 and 13, it says, if the disease breaks out all over their skin, and so far as the priest can see, it covers all the skin of the affected person from head to foot. The priest is to examine them. And if the disease has covered their whole body, he shall pronounce them clean. Since it has turned all white, they are clean. God gave cleanliness laws for the protection of the Israelites. Initially, a person showing signs of an infectious disease would be quarantined until it is discovered what they have and if they can be declared clean. We are currently in a period of quarantine right now and in, in a small way we can relate to how someone might feel to be ostracized from their community. When I look at this passage in Leviticus, I see that if I were alive during that time, I would have been separated. I would have been quarantined for a time. But after being inspected by the priests, I would have been declared clean. That gives me a lot of hope. And in fact, what I see in both the passage in Mark and Leviticus is that there is always hope. That it is also what the message of the cross is about. It's a message of hope. Because of the destructive nature of our sin to God, when we, face, when we are faced with the disease of sin, we are separated from God. But because Jesus was willing to come and die for our sin and he was resurrected, he became our high priest. He inspects us and he declares us clean. We can now live transformed, resurrected lives. We have been recipients of God's indignant compassion because of Jesus. As we take communion, let us remember, let us remember that hope and let us draw closer to Jesus. I'm so inspired by Aisha's communion. And I know you are moved just like I was. Let's go to God in a word of prayer as we pray for the communion. I wanna encourage you right before we start our prayer to make sure that you have grape juice or a glass of wine and bread or uh, the wafer. Uh, many of you have pre-filled communion cups that we've distributed to all of our family groups. But if you don't, please use whatever you have in your home so that we can share communion together. Let's go to God in a word of prayer. Our God and Father, thank you so much for the amazing way that you moved through Aisha to really help us and to help our hearts to see that you, by your grace, you gave your life so that we would be made clean. God, thank you so much for your grace and for your mercy. Thank you for taking on all of our diseases, all of our sickness, all of our sin so that we could be saved. We're so grateful 
God, just for your kindness. And as we take this bread that represents your son's broken body, and we take this juice that represents your son's blood spilled on the cross, we're moved by your grace and moved by your amazing love for us. We pray all these things with great confidence. In Jesus' name, amen. Oh Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary, pure and holy, tried and true, with thanksgiving, I'll be a living sanctuary. And it was you, Lord, who gave the Savior heart and soul, Lord, to every man. It is you, Lord, who knows my weakness, and you refine me. And lead me, O oh Lord, through temptation. You refine me from within. Fill our hearts with your Holy Spirit and take all sins away and oh lord prepare me to be a sanctuary pure and holy tried and true with thanksgiving i'll be a sanctuary for you. Good morning, church. Really grateful for the opportunity that we've had to get to know the church even more this weekend. Uh, as I think about the old friendships that we've had over the years and also just the new friendships that we've been able to build over this time. Uh, all I can say is we're just really grateful and we've been inspired by the Potomac Valley Church and the ways that you guys have engaged in the community, you've really set an incredible pace. And uh, my wife mentioned earlier that we lead the uh, Southeast region of the Northern Virginia Church. And we really have looked to Potomac Valley as a model that we've been following within our region. So I really just wanna lift you guys up uh, and say how grateful we are for the opportunity to be able to uh, interview here. Uh, 17 days ago, I received the message in the morning, uh, about five o'clock in the morning, that schools were gonna be canceled for the next month. Uh, I sent a text to my wife so that she would get the news when she woke up. We let the girls sleep in a little bit that morning. Then I uh, walked into their room, snuck up on them, woke them up frantically, told them the time and that they're gonna be late for the bus. And, um, you know, they were more skeptical than, uh, than taking that serious. But then as I shared the news why, that school had been canceled because of the coronavirus, uh, one of my daughters said, yay, corona. I mean, boo, corona, because it's dangerous. But yay, no school, we get to stay home. It's amazing how quickly our lives can change. You know, introverts, many introverts are loving life right now. Meanwhile, many extroverts are struggling, you know. Uh, we're honestly, us extroverts are the ones more likely to not listen to the advice going on right now. So I want to reiterate, we need to obey what our people are telling us, what the CDC are telling us. We need to wash our hands. We need to, you know, not be in public places and, and all those things. Keep your distance, social distancing. And by no means do you gather a group of 20 guys together to play pickup soccer in the basketball court in my neighborhood. Oddly specific, but amen, just, just speaking there. But again, 
it's amazing how quickly lives can change. To our educators that are out there and public servants, I am amazed at your hearts and the amount of work that you are doing to uh, get the work out there for the kids, to keep information flowing so that we can know what's going on, to keep the community safe. Thank you. We applaud you. To all the healthcare workers that are out there, you are on the front line. And I know this is an online service, but if you are a healthcare worker, just I want you to say so in the comments so that we can just thank you for the work that you're doing and praying for you as well. You know, personally, my heart goes out to all the parents of school age kids that have uh, very quickly found themselves as teachers and entertainers and full time chefs all day long. Uh, staying home with kids is, is no joke, to which the young families say, welcome back to our club. But my heart also breaks for those homes that are not a haven, for those situations where maybe there's abuse going on in the house or, um, or the parents aren't around or school was a real retreat for them, that they no longer have that available my heart breaks for you, or maybe there's marriages that are out there. I know there are marriages that are out there that aren't gonna survive uh, the corona, you know, this, this time period here. My heart breaks for you in those situations, but how quickly our lives can change for the better. If you would turn with me over to Genesis chapter 12, as we read the word this morning. In Genesis chapter 12, we have, at this point, not yet Abraham, but Abram, uh, who is being called by God to leave his home country. So let's read. We'll start off here in verse 1. The Bible says, The Lord had said to Abram, Go from your country, your people, and your father's household to the land I will show you. I will make you into a great nation, and I will bless you. And, you, and I will make your name great, and you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and whoever curses you, I will curse. And all peoples on earth will be blessed through you. That was Genesis 12, verses 1 through 3. This passage is really incredible. The way it's broken down, the way the Bible is written, I love the Bible and how intricate it is. Um, but the way this passage is broken down is God starts off with a command followed by three promises. And then he goes and gives another command followed by three more promises. So we're going to break through that right now. The first command that God gives is to Abram is to go. Go. Followed by the three promises that, that God will make him a great nation, that God will bless him, and that God will make his name great. You know, Abraham was called to leave home, family. He was called to trade comfort of the known and enter a world of the unknown. Sounds familiar, doesn't it? But he was entering this unknown place, not by himself, but with God and his promises. And certainly we are in unknown times right now. And this is exactly the time that we need to be clinging to the promises that God has for us, knowing that God is the same during the bad times and also the good. God does not change. Now's the time for us to really share those promises that we hold on to with one another, with our neighbors, with those around us in the community, that we encourage one another with these words. I would ask you to share your little, you know, favorite passages now, but, uh, you know, I don't want to take your eyes off the camera. But speaking of go, we are here right now in beautiful Fredericksburg, Virginia, because the Potomac Valley is launching a region in the Rappahannock. You know, you've been preparing to go for years. And we're excited about the possibility to be able to lead the charge in evangelizing this part of our world. We're excited at the chance to work even closer with the Potomac Valley Church 
and the Potomac Valley family. We're excited to work with the Archers and the Thomases and Cynthia Davis and the elders and the, uh, the deacons that are here and, and those six family groups that are in, Potom that are in the, the South region or the Fredericksburg region here. We're excited to go and make an incredible impact on this very area. You know, in, in this area, there are a lot of historical manors that are around. But the manners that I'm focused on are the family groups and the houses that they represent, that they're gonna not only change history, but change eternity for the people that live here. You know, there's also a lot of battlefields that are around here as well. But what I'm focusing on are the battles that you guys have been fighting and will continue to fight for people's souls. I'm grateful for the examples that have gone before like hindsight, fighting for families to break free of poverty, and the other examples that are like that. God for sure wants to make this area a great name for himself. God wants to use your church building that you're praying and sacrificing for to make his name great there. God wants to use the preschool as a blessing to the families of this community. And these are things that glorify God. And these are the things that only happen when we step out on faith and go. I know that many of you have wanted the church here in Fredericksburg for years and you've been faithful in your commute. You've been faithful and loving where you live. But now's the time in order to be successful, we can't operate out of convenience or comfort, meaning we can't stay the same. We're gonna have to change. We are called to go in order to see the promises of God come to fruition. Honestly, I feel a little bit weird interviewing. You know, I've been in Northern Virginia all 18 and a half of my Christian years. But I'm sure and I imagine that that's how Abram felt as well. A certain comfort level, a certain fear to step out on faith. But the scripture that I'm reminded of in Romans 1 says the righteous will live by faith. Therefore, we cannot and I cannot let fear drive what we do or what we don't do. And it's amazing how a group armed just with faith can do amazing things and really change cities and communities. But I don't have to tell Potomac Valley that. You guys have been living it. The second point that I have here is there was a shift that happens in this passage. As we get into the second command, uh, that was given, it's a little in a weird place. You know, God says, he's calling Abraham to go and be a blessing. And I thought that's an interesting place for a command to be. But God's goal is not just to bless you and to bless us, but his goal is to bless us so that we can be a blessing for other people. If I point out some Hebrew here, the word for blessing is this uh, Hebrew word barach. I'm probably not pronouncing that right, but don't hold it against me. But what's incredible is that word brought for bless is, is a verb. It means to bless. But then there's a shift that happens when the command is given to Abram. It's beracha. And it means, and it's a noun. So what's amazing is God goes from blessing us, the action of blessing us, to you becoming the blessing. You are the blessing. Your life is the blessing. When you think about it, you are a blessing to your neighbors around you, your coworkers, your friends. You are the blessing. You are the gift. You know, for the parents with their hands full at home with kids, be their blessing by sharing your schedule or having a play date with the kids outside, but you be their blessing. For those low on toilet paper, be their blessing by giving them some rolls. They need it. For the marriages that are on edge, maybe they're posting all those fake smiles. Be their blessing by sharing what's really going on in your life, in your marriage, in your house right now, and asking them how things are going for, for them, just so that the door gets opened. Maybe you want to drop off treats for your neighbors, or perhaps maybe that particular house that you drop off some cookies at, that may be a house where it's tents inside. 
And maybe your little tree can be something that really turns the tide for them. It's amazing how quickly our lives can change, but it's amazing how quickly our lives can change for the better. Go, be a blessing, be the church. Thank you and God bless. on the third day. What is your good confession to